Hey guys, Billy Costa here. Thrilled to be back at Mass General Cancer Center. Every once in a while, I'm invited back here, and it's my thrill because I get to meet some very, very interesting people who are doing wonderful things, both changing lives and saving lives. I'm sitting with doctors, uh, Kerry Reynolds and uh, Chloe Villani. Welcome. Thank you. Boy, you guys look so happy. Director of Severe Immunotherapy Complications Program. What does that even mean? By background, I'm an oncologist. And in 2016, I started noticing that we were seeing an increasing number of patients that were admitted with complications related to immunotherapy. Right. And immunotherapy is actually really exciting, kind of novel therapy to wake up the immune system so it recognizes cancer. Sure. But when you wake up the immune system, it sometimes can recognize your normal tissues. The immune system can recognize the lungs or the gut or the thyroid or the other glands. And so that's when we started to say, we need to really think about these patients and develop a multidisciplinary kind of subspecialty level care for these individual patients because we have a lot to figure out. Uh, director yes. of Single Cell Genomics Program. Yes, research program at MGH. This is uh, a new way of um, interrogating the tissue where we can get ex extract information from every single cell that makes up a tissue. The, the analogy we often use is, let's say um, you compare your tissue to a fruit salad, mm -hmm. right? And every single piece of fruit is actually a cell. Uh, the way we've been analyzing the fruit salad or your tissue is by doing a fruit smoothie. Now, let's say, for example, that there were three blueberries, they were rotten, in, in your fruit salad and I made a fruit smoothie. So that, the analogy would be three um, cells driving the pathology, right? If you did a fruit smoothie and I give it to you and I say, hey, can you taste blueberries? Are they rotten? Are they from Maine or are they from California? You wouldn't be able to tell me this, right? But with single cell genomics technology, I can tell you every single piece of fruit that is every single cell that makes up a tissue. I can tell you if it's a healthy cell or if it's a disease cell. It's actually the new uh, microscope right, uh, of our generation. It's extremely powerful technologies. And I'm bringing this suite of tools here at MGH so that we can integrate patient's tissue, find new therapeutic targets, find new biomarkers. And I'm teaming up with my colleague, Gary. Well, it's funny because when we were setting up the interview, it was kind of like unstated that, no, oh, no, we work as a team. Like I wasn't going to get one or the other of you. I was going to get the two of you or nothing. <laughs> so having said that, could you explain your roles and how they intertwine? In 2016, remember, that was the inflection point of a lot more patients being treated. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met David in the emergency room, so just over there. And David was awesome. So 65-year-old, he was a CEO of a tech company, he was a loving father, two kids, you name it. He pretty much had it all. But he developed a melanoma that year that had spread. And unfortunately, he never made it out of the hospital. Oh. And I can remember the day that I was over in London and caring for him when he realized he might not get through it. And he looked up and he said, Doc, you have to learn from this. And I think those words are exactly where I thought, if we're gonna learn from this, we need the scientific backup to really understand what's happening, right? Because we have all these questions and no answers. And so now if we were caring for David, we would take the sample from the lung, we would take the sample from the blood, we would take the sample from the colon, all of that to study what exact cells are there, right? So it's this team dynamic that we see the patients, if they agree to research, the samples go to Chloe so she can figure out exactly what's happening and bring it right back to us so that we can think about treating these patients moving forward because that really had such, really stunned kind of so many of us here. And that's a very rare situation but it happens and with the use of these drugs only increasing we feel like we have to get to these answers together. Well we're lucky to have you. What a team! We're a team! <laughs> a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Since you have the stethoscope could you just give a listen yeah, to make sure it's... Yeah of course. No, yeah, I'm we kidding. Could just make sure it's <laughs>